Hi everybody, my name is David. Today I'm gonna to walk you through the process of properly assessing some damage and then executing restoration work on this nice set of English Regency or American Federal period uh, antique chairs. It's a really great mahogany chairs, date back to about 1810, the early 19th century. Really nice set of chairs, but my client contacted me to help them out with them. They got a bit of damage. Uh, the dog did some damage and they got some other things. So let me walk you through the process and show you basically how I would assess all the damages with these chairs and then come up with a game plan for properly restoring uh, the chairs back to a good condition. So let me walk you through that process. We're looking at the first chair here in the set. It's loose, but it's not as bad. I can see the rear seat rail here is a little bit loose. This leg is broken loose from the glue joint right here at the front. And then also the style here is tight to the side seat rail and that one's tight. And there's a little bit of play here as well in between this leg and then the front seat rail. On the other chair, however, we got a bit of a more of a challenge for us. As you can see here, the rear, the rear style on this is split and broken. And unfortunately my client, she set the piece aside but she lost it, um, she put it in safekeeping. Um, and the piece that was here is now missing completely. So we're gonna have to fabricate that part. Um, also, the leg and the seat rail are completely out here, the joint, so this is completely disassembled, as well as the front seat rail. And then you can see some additional damage. This had some restoration work at some point where somebody had spliced in a piece here. Um, you can see this joint, I'll show you that. But then in addition to that, her dog decided to use this as a chew toy, so we've got some pet damage here as well. Um, and generally speaking, the chair is pretty loose. We're gonna have to open it up a bit and get some glue in there. So let me walk you through the process of what I would do as my next step. These are really nice chairs. They're made of Honduran mahogany. One of the things that I like about these chairs, a key feature of these chairs and why I think chairs like this have, have lasted for so long is primarily their construction. The joinery on these chairs is a really nice, it's a, uh, it's a double mortise and tenon here. You can see here that this has got the two slots a lot of modern chairs these days, you'll see that it, most of them these tastes are just dowels, but with this mortise and tenon, it's really nice. A lot of times you'll see it just has one single. This has two, which is a really nice way to make this chair. Now, of course, on the back here, where this side seat rail goes into the style back here, it's just a large one, and I'm sure it's the same here on the front leg. But where it attaches to the seat rail on the front and the back, it's two, it's a double mortise and tenon. Really nice feature there. This particular chair has got really nice mahogany here <clears throat> on the front and the legs, the seat rails, the style, and the crest rail is all solid mahogany, as well as this smaller horizontal rail, which is more like a splat, I guess. It's not vertical, but, um, but the interior of the seat rail here is made of actually oak. So these, these rail, the front and back rail are made of oak and they're veneered with this, this has got a nice bull nose mahogany on it, which is a really nice feature. And then they also <coughs> veneered the rear of it. Um, very simple. It's got a nice medallion up here on the crest rail, a saber leg. Very simple, flowing lines, very classic. That's why these are still used to this day. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do here is disassemble the chairs completely um, as far as what's loose. Now, of course, this is subjective, so I would just say use your best judgment when it comes to disassembling antique chairs. But primarily, if there's a joint that's not loose, like the joint that's here between this seat rail and this front leg, this is completely tight. There's no reason or no good that's gonna come from attempting to disassemble this joint. You're gonna split the wood, so it's best to leave this alone. So typically what I like to do is I like to feel these parts and find out what's loose. If it's really loose, think of it like your tooth. If your tooth is really, really loose, you can probably get it out. If you touch it and it seems really like it's not quite ready to come out yet, leave it alone. So this front seat right here is loose, so we're gonna tap this off. I'm gonna use a rubber mouth to take this off. A lot of times what I like to do is try to use a block of pine wood as a cushion just so that I don't make this any worse than it has to be. And sometimes it's better to set this down on the ground. So put it on top of your bench like that. You can put a, a board here and we're just gonna gently tap this because we want this to release, but we don't want to split anything. So we're gonna tap it and just have a peek. If it doesn't look like it's coming apart, and this one is coming apart, we're just gonna keep tapping. Checking it, it's still coming out. A couple more taps here. And then we'll wiggle it out. Now we got the whole thing out there. We got both tenons intact. There's a little bit of dirt in here, but of course this joint's been together for 
about 250 years. And there's a little bit of glue on there, but it's nice and clean. The mortises came out nice and clean. They didn't split, so that's great. Now we're gonna check the rest of these joints. And honestly, this seems really nice and tight. This back one is nice and tight. Side to side, it's a little loose, but I wanna be very careful because I know that this crest rail is slipped over top of the two styles here. And we don't wanna just knock this apart because if we do, we're gonna split that. So instead of knocking this completely apart, what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna try to tap it open slightly. Because what we can do is inject some wood glue into there and that's gonna really do the purpose. Because this isn't extremely loose, it's just slightly loose. So I'm gonna give it just a couple small taps and I'm gonna check and see how far it comes apart. That's opening a bit. And again, I'm keeping an eye on this. This top joint right here is really nice and tight. And what I don't wanna create is another problem like you see on its sister chair over there. So we're gonna kind of stop right there. I've got basically this opened up about an eighth of an inch. And that's probably about all we're gonna get without creating some kind of an issue. So let's just stop right there. Now also one thing to note on this particular chair is that somebody attempted to repair here and you can see that there's a lag bolt here running right through this and in the back here you can see that it's been plugged so we're gonna have to drill that out to remove this and get this out of the way before we par up we're gonna clean this up a bit with a chisel we're gonna make this nice and flat so we can cut new pieces so um, on that one that's good now let's assess the second chair before we get into taking that out and on this one, let's just double check these joints and make sure they're tight. I can see that the joint right here at the seat rail on the front leg is loose. It's a little loose here at the seat rail to here, but the side to the front leg looks good. So it's basically loose at the front rail. So again, I'm just gonna give it a little tap. It wants to open. I can see it coming out apart. I'm not gonna go too far with that. And it looks like it's gonna open here on this side too. So when doing this, you gotta be really careful. This is old mahogany, it's very brittle. And these have tenons run all through these joints right here at the four corners. So we don't wanna to put too much pressure on those and flex them too much, because if we do, guarantee it they'll crack and split. So we don't need to go open very much. That is really, honestly, it's about as far as I wanna go with it. Could maybe push it a little bit more, but I don't like going more than about an eighth of an inch. 3 16 maybe, but a quarter inch is gonna to be too much. All right, so that one's open a bit, and this one's open. Now, unfortunately, <clears throat> with that being the case, you know, we're not gonna be able to cover these tenon, and mort these mortise and tenons, rather, with, with all new glue, but we can get a bit in there, and it's a fairly tight joint anyway, so I don't think we need to completely disassemble this. Um, but then checking the rest of the chair, it's a little bit loose right here at this center rail right there you can see that's almost wants to come out and we'll get that up and it's doing the same right here at the seat see so this is coming apart as well so the whole chair could probably get the whole chair part actually since the back's already off this one let's just keep tapping and find out if this comes apart that one's out that one's out All right, I don't want to go too much here without protecting that wood. All right, there we go, chairs apart. So now that we got our two pieces separated, let's double check these and see what else, because I think this front seat rail needs to come out the rest of the way there. That's tight. This, this is good otherwise. So this piece needs nothing right now. We're just gonna set this aside for now. This particular one, let's see here. Yeah, this is, we're gonna pull this out. Again, just like a tooth, we're gonna wiggle it right out of there. Oh, let me give it a tap. I'm gonna hold this and just tap this down. Let's get one more. I wanna be really cautious with this because truthfully, you can be a bit of a bull in a china shop if you're impatient. You start forcing these things apart. 
can really create more problems for yourself than you need to. So let's just be really slow about it. There we go. And there we go. It's all apart, no damage. Got a little bit of dust for you. That's about it. So the front leg is loose here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get this off. So I'm just gonna hold this here and tap this this way. And this one, you gotta be off. You know what, actually I have a better way to do this. I have a spreader clamp. Let's use a spreader clamp. If we can use a spreader clamp and put pressure on it, I think that's a better way to go. Let's see, where did I put the spreader clamps? So here we're gonna take this clamp and we're gonna hopefully force up. Oh, what am I doing here? I'm doing this backwards. That doesn't want to go that way. Let's just see. If I rock it a little bit, it might work its way out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rest the back of this against my hip here. Try to stabilize this a bit. And again, I don't want to beat the wood up. It's going to be difficult. I can see it wants to open, but it doesn't want to go all the way. So I'm going to choose to not force it. I don't want to beat this up. Sometimes if they're stiff and they're holding like that, it may be best just to let it stay together. So let's leave that one together. I can see there's a little bit of glue here on the inside mortise that's holding it in place. Let me give it one final shot before I give up on this. Oh, there it goes. I did it. Hold this still and walk this out. Well, I got the gap opened up, but again, I don't want to, I don't want to beat this up. But it's, it's disengaged, the joint's disengaging, so. I think if I could just get it to go the rest of the way, we'd be in good shape here. I don't want to put too much pressure on it. Any, you have to keep it square, otherwise you risk cracking it. Another good way to do this would be to slip a piece of wood in there. Let's try that. We can slip a piece of wood in there if I have one. That might hack, act as a shim and give us something to push it against. It's slowly opening up for me. I'm gonna show you how delicate this joint is when I get it apart, and you'll see why I'm being so cautious. The mahogany here is very old. Mahogany's brittle even when it's not old. <laughs> it's right there. Patience is a virtue. Has anybody ever heard that one? Patience is a virtue. Okay, could probably put a couple more shims in here at this point because it's starting to spread out, but it's so close. <clears throat> it's amazing the precision that uh, these cabinet makers used to get these joints as snug as they did, and they really are snug. All right, let me just, I'm gonna have to give this a good little 
in here. But you know what, honestly, I don't wanna, my fear is that we're gonna damage that and I don't wanna go through all that trouble to just wind up damaging it. So. I'm gonna make myself a small bar here I can use hopefully as a wedge so that this doesn't come back together. Here we go. Here we go. And there we go. Okay. So let me show you how, how this joint is so you'll understand what you're dealing with here. Essentially you have, you can see here you have a nice mortise and then these this way and it's hollow in here. So the, the risk is splitting this piece out. You don't want to split this piece or you don't want to split this piece. So we got this disassembled and it's fully intact. So we can clean the old glue off of that and we can install new glue when we get it back together. So let's just set all of our chair parts aside and now we're gonna cut some clamp blocks and I'll show you how we gotta get this one prepared because we're gonna have to replace this missing section. So there's some work here to clean this up in preparation of doing that. So uh, with that said, let's set this chair parts aside. Here is this bit here there and there. And on this one, So on this one, we got basically two pieces that we got to carve out of this. Um, this one's been replaced at one point before. So um, this, is, this is a little bit uh, complicated, I guess, is to say is that we're dealing with two issues here. We got one issue is that this tenon is shortly damaged, which I think we can leave that in place. I think that's enough for the glue to hold. But right here in this portion here, you can see where the dog chewed on this. So, but I don't want to necessarily detach that. I can fill this, this part isn't structural. I can fill this particular portion with like a resin fill or like a lacquer for like a burn in or something to that effect. Um, but what we do want to replace is this, this newer section that somebody had spliced in at some point. So that's really straightforward and simple. Basically we can do this on the bandsaw. I don't need to do anything crazy here. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a straight line here to highlight that and then right there where it is. And I'm going to put this on the bandsaw and I'm just going to cut that right off and we'll glue a new piece right into place on that one. And on this other one here, you'll see here what we're going to do. Let me get this up where you can see it here. On this one in particular, it's the same issue. Basically you've got this nice section here missing. So we want to get the entire depth of this break down to what this is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my depth on my thumb. I do a lot of this by hand. So I'm just going to set the depth on my thumb and I'm going to run this pen pencil down here and score a line so I can see how far I got to go with that. So again, starting right here, I've got my thumbnail against the back inside of the style and I'm pushing down with the, the lead tip of the pencil and I'm just going to mark a line all the way down to the bottom there. That's the depth we want. And then I can take this and draw it over here. And then so basically we're gonna just gonna take a chisel and we're gonna clean that up. And then on the front here, where this is like this, you'll see this is sort of broken on an angle as well. And we're gonna clean this up and we're gonna try to make this a 90 degree. So we're gonna come over and we're gonna clean it out just like that and make a nice 90 degree piece. So we can start on that right now actually is to put on a safety glove. I've cut many thumbs, hands over the years. So I got smart and finally got myself a safety glove. And so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna follow this line and we're just gonna clean this up. So I'm gonna do this a little bit at a time. I'm not gonna go too far with this. Just kind of checking it as I go. Let's see here. Clean this up a little bit right here.
As a matter of fact, before we do that, let's draw a line on that one. Let's just make this, make sure we're working with a straight line here. That's pretty good. Okay, and we're just gonna continue to keep taking out this material until we basically got it all out of the way there. being really slow with this. I'm not trying to force this. I'm not trying to be too aggressive with my cuts. I'm being, just like I said, just a little tiny bit at a time. We don't need to rush through this. There's no time limit. It's not a race. It's a good time to sort of contemplate. <laughs> Think about where your life is, I guess. There's no rush. There's no, there's no award for getting to the end of this on time. So just clean that up. Let's double check this here on this side. What I really like to do is get some of this out of here. I don't want to go against the grains around the other way. Let's come at this this, this way for a minute. This is grains running the opposite direction. Here, I'm just slowly wiggling my knife through here. I don't want it to jump too much if I can avoid it. I bumped it right there one time. There we go. And that's okay, because we haven't even got to where our line is yet. And we want to get this corner in there, and then we can clean it up when we get to the end. We'll clean it up a bit with a, um, with a small file. Let me use a small bastard file. Check my line, make sure we're not getting off track here. I'm gonna go a little bit more. My chisels could be sharpened a little bit. They're, they're not razor sharp, but they're pretty close. All right, let's have another look at this from this angle here. That looks pretty close. So, and again, you just gotta kinda keep moving this thing around and looking at it from different angles. I can see from this side that it's a little high down in here. So let's clean this up. That looks pretty close. We got about another sixteenth of an inch to shave off on this tip. And again, there's no rush. No rush at all. All right, so that looks pretty good. So for the next step, the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do here before we start making our pieces, we gotta make a template of the piece of wood that we're gonna to have to put into this uh, location right here. So the best way to do that, honestly, is to just make a paper template. So you can just, well, at least what I like to do. Of course, you can do it however you like, but I'll take a sheet of paper, 
And I'm basically just gonna lay this over here. I'm, I'm really just trying to get a rough shape on this. I'm gonna cut it a little bit large, and then as I go, I'll fine tune it. And so what I'm gonna basically do here is you can, you can take this leg, lay it right on top of the paper, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a general outline of the leg to give us the ballpark shape of the leg, front and back. And then once I have that, I can lay this back up over top of here and make sure that we've got this about right. I'm looking through the light here to see how this lays out. And then as I'm looking at this, I can see basically the shadow of the chair leg against my paper pencil lines. And so I can just trace this right here. You can actually, before we do that, we can just sort of try to hold it there and push it and make an impression. Again, I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm just looking to get a general idea of the shape and size we need. So I'm just gonna find these angled lines and push against them. Okay. And then if I flip this over, I can see with the lines I drew and the lines I made here, I know that generally speaking, I need a piece that's gonna be roughly this here. And as you see here, this is what we got. Here's our leg. Here's the piece we need, at least from the side profile. Now, of course, this is a complex cut that we're gonna have to do here. It's a little tricky. If you look in here, you'll see we basically have this. Of course, this uh, tenon is gonna be in place there, so we'll have to have the depth of this new piece come to here, but then as it goes above the tenon, it's gonna come in further to create this mortise here. So it, it's gonna make more sense once we do this. But it's, a, it's not super complicated. It's a little complicated, not too complicated. It's in one of those situations. So the next thing we're gonna do is um, basically go to the bandsaw. We're gonna cut out this out of a block of mahogany. I've already selected a nice board of mahogany. It's really difficult to get exact pieces of mahogany. There's lots of species of mahogany. All these cabinet makers, and I'm not one of them, they'll tell you that. Um, but I've got a board here that I'm gonna take this out of. So we're gonna go over to the bandsaw here. Uh, we'll make a trace of this and then we'll cut it out and we'll get rolling on this. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut out the area we don't need. I might leave this just slightly heavy. I'd rather have a little bit extra wood on the outside that I gotta sand down than it to be too aggressive of a cut. And so we're gonna cut that literally maybe a 16th that we need. So this is a pretty good fit. Uh, the one thing now that I got this is, I'm happy with this. I'm happy the way this sits here. Now of course we're gonna have to trim this here and then the front profile will have to trim that as well. So it's very simple. You can just take a pencil, score it, score it there, and same here. Just drawing it across like this. And this is gonna give us our general shape. Now the, you have to be careful here though because this is a bull nose right here, which means it's the highest is right here. So we don't wanna cut this right on that line or it'll actually be a little too short. 
So we're going to cut this just a little bit higher because we'll have to literally do this with a rasp uh, by hand once the whole block is glued in place. So when it comes to wood glues, you got a few options. This glue in particular is a really nice glue for restoration work. Old brown glue. Uh, let's see here. It's made by Antique Refinishers Inc. out of San Diego. Uh, manufactured in the good old United States of America. Not much is these days, but this glue is, and you can get this. This is a nice glue. Um, and we're going to use this one today. But also you could just use standard um, Type On 3. This is a great wood glue. I use this a lot. It's great glue. Um, and then they also make a hide glue if you want something that's going to give you more of uh, something that you would use with the antiques. Um, this glue I use a lot too. This one's a little bit old. But I've got lots of this, so we're going to go with this. Um, this isn't too complicated. We are just going to dab a bit of glue onto these surfaces and clamp them up and then it'll sit overnight. And I'm not going to worry too much about the squeeze out or clamping this, I'm sorry, squeezing out when I clamp this up. Make sure this goes on because we're still going to have to do some finish work anyway. So do it when you set aside. Let's use. I'm going to use that right there. And I'm going to set this right in the middle and I'll cut this out the rest of the way and shape it once I got this glued up. All right, so let's go ahead and put the rest of the glue on that. And this piece right here, honestly, is more cosmetic than anything. It's not really a structural piece. So it's really not going to be under, under any stress or tension or anything like that. So it's not something we got to be overly concerned with. We're just going to glue it down and let it do its thing tonight. All right, so just just like that. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me walk that into the joint a little bit tighter. I see there's a little gap there. Let me see if I can get that to go in a little bit. There it goes. All right, and let's clamp it right there. Uh, make sure this is walked out how I want it. Not that much. And let me get this clamp tight. These clamps are not playing along here. Let me get this one down first. This is one of those operations that's better with, <laughs> it's better if you got uh, four sets of hands, you know? Anyway, all right. I'm gonna run these clamps opposite too, just to create a little extra uh, sort of tension. I wanna even that and distribute that weight of the clamp out evenly. One pulling this way, one pulling that way. All right, cool. That's on there really nice and tight. I got uh, this pretty well aligned. And then, so when we're done, we'll just clean up that bull nose on a uh, bandsaw and do some finish work. All right, so that's this one. We're just gonna set that aside. And then the other one here, same process, real simple. We're just gonna put some glue. Uh, let's see. We want glue on one, two, three, four surfaces here. And there's no need for any glue um, inside this area here. So we can just mark that actually real fast, just so we don't get confused and stick glue in there by accident. So I'll just put a little line in there where I know that's not gonna get any glue. So everything else gets glued, just not inside that line. And the glue doesn't really, you don't have to go overboard with this stuff. I mean, you wanna, a healthy amount of glue on there, but you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to go crazy train on it. Let's see here. All right, and same here. We're just gonna. It's nice to have a, a little bit of extra glue just for uh, inconsistencies. I mean, that works more so with epoxies, where it adds as a sort of like a gap filler. You don't really get that quality so much, I think, with these hide glues. But it doesn't hurt. All right. So that looks pretty good. 
there, 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 and that strip there, and there, and same here. Let's see here. Not on the front, just on the back. Here. Let's get this section here. And there. And all right, that's pretty good. Okay. And we're gonna need some more clamps for this one too. Let's see how this I'll put one on it and we'll get a couple more in there. So the first clamp I'm gonna run is probably going to be side to side. Right there like that. And before you draw that up, just make sure it's tight. You know, common sense. <laughs> Not that it's very common, but Okay, and now we'll do one up here, and then we'll do a pair of them going from front to back. Okay, so now we'll draw a clamp here. I'm kind of holding that into that corner. I want to make sure it's tight. And then, oh, you know what we didn't do? Well, we don't quite need them yet, I guess. We do need to cut some uh, blocks back here when we glue this chair all the way back together. I guess we don't quite need them yet. This will probably be just fine for now, just to get this wood block into place. Now, when clamping this, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna force it out. And we don't have to clamp it to death. We just wanna get some pressure on it so that it's really pushed against that, that piece there. I wish I had cut a, uh, a block for this one. Let me see. Maybe, maybe. And maybe I should have cut a block. I guess I could make one real quick. Let's do that. Let's make a block real quick. Um, I'm gonna cut a small wedge shaped block here so that I can get this square. So I'm gonna make a paper trace and make a block real quick off camera. All right, so here's, here's the block we made. You see that fits the back profile of the leg and it gives me a flat surface to clamp against. So that helps out a lot when it comes to clamping these things. And we had to make them anyway, so it's not gonna kill us to make it prematurely. All right, so again, <laughs> helps if you have octopus arms. If not, you're just gonna have to do your best. So let's just try to get this to go a little tight and then hopefully the clamp will kind of hold itself there while I can get the other one on there. And look at that, it walked up. Let me see if I can get this in place properly. Oh, come on now, play along. I can see the profile on this isn't quite perfect, but it's okay, it's okay. It'll do the trick. Okay, and the same thing here. Okay, and I'm just looking at this line just to see how much glue comes out of that joint. And I can see it's getting, it's getting there, so. All right, awesome. So that's basically done. I'm gonna set this down. It's gonna to be top heavy now, so it's gonna to wanna to tip over. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this down. We got these two pieces clamped together, so really there's nothing else that needs to be done this evening with this particular chair. So we're just gonna set this aside for now and wait for it to be dry tomorrow, and then we can fit this, I'm sorry, finish this off rather. And then um, once that's all cleaned up and everything, we can basically reassemble the chair, do some color and touch up work, and this is a done deal. And so on the second chair here, basically we're just gonna reassemble this one. Once we get the chair reassembled, we can then address the upper crest rail and the damage there, and we'll mount this last. But before we do that, let's reassemble the chair. Um, essentially, the side to side joint is gonna be really straightforward. We don't have to do anything special there. But from front to rear with the curves you have on this chair, it's gonna be really difficult to put a clamp where it needs to be. So again, we're gonna make some blocks here. I'll show you how you do that. Basically, you take wide board. I like to use two by fours or pine, you know, two by eights, whatever you can get, because it's cheap and it cuts easy on a bandsaw. So just lay the, uh, the leg over top of that. And I'm gonna go ahead, and, and you don't need to do it all the way from the top to the bottom. Basically, you just need to cover this area. I like to add a little bit though, so it sits pretty evenly. Um, but let's save a little bit, because we're gonna need some to make one on the front, uh, the front knee of this leg here. So let's, let's just do it about right here, say. And again, just lay it over it. I'm gonna trace it out with, the, I'm gonna put my keep on this one, keep there. And I'll cut that out. And on this side, 
I can use this one as well. And this will be, let's do it about, God, I hate to, yeah, that'll cut out like that. We'll have a little bit extra. Okay, so in here, we're gonna just, we've got an S curve and get the front saber there. And we don't need to do too much, so I'll just take it like that. I'm just eyeballing that, and that should be good there. So we're gonna keep this side. Okay, that's kind of a tight cut there for that one. So we might not go all the way up, we might just go up to here. We don't necessarily get up, need to get up on top of the leg, but just past this curve so that the uh, clamp doesn't wanna walk around. So let me run over the band saw. I'll cut these out real quick, and then we'll be ready to glue this up. We'll cut out this first one, and then we'll do the other one. This has got a really sharp curve here, so I'll probably cut a couple slots in there and make it a little bit easier to make that turn with this pig's, I have a half inch bandsaw blade in here. So it's... This done, I can actually clean this up just a slight bit right here on. This doesn't need much. I just really want to get rid of those little ridges from the uh, blade. All right, there we go. That's all that needs. So now we're going to get back over there and glue our chair up. All right, it looks like we got the same problem with this chair on the front here just a little bit of glue nothing major so we're just going to try to chip it loose this would be a great time for safety glasses or glasses in general because these little bits will definitely catch you right in the eye when you're not expecting it and then you gotta wash your eye out I remember being a young kid uh, doing model airplanes and gluing my eyelashes shut. <laughs> Bet you my mom remembers that one. <laughs> All 
All right, and most of this glue pops right off. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to get it off, just a little scraping. All right, that one's good. There's a big glob of, it looks like epoxy here. This is a, another problem that I see. There we go. Uh, a lot of people, and I've definitely been guilty of this in the past, is uh, use epoxy a little bit too liberally sometimes when you're using epoxy resins. Epoxy resins definitely have a place in furniture restoration. Um, there's no denying that. Uh, I know a lot of people are purists and they don't want to um, use anything outside of the norm, but honestly, there's some instances where epoxy is, is really your best option um, because it's going to fill gaps and it holds really well, but I think you got to be very selective about when and where you're going to use it. Um, it's nice to have a lot of, um, it's nice to have a lot of uh, tricks up your sleeve, I guess, as it were, but you got to be, like I said, selective and just because you know how to do it and it's the quick way doesn't mean it's always the right way. Doesn't mean it's the wrong way either. So, just depends on the circumstances, I suppose. All right, so. One little bit right here, and this is gonna be good to go. All right, cool. Let's just double check the fit on that, make sure it still slides in there nice and smooth. It does, it actually fits really good. Cool, so that's really easy. Let's just put a little bit of glue on that right now and we'll put two clamps on it and this one will be good to sit overnight. So, same as before. I am Henry, I am Henry, I am, I am. Okay. All right, so there we go with that. So we'll dab there, we'll dab there, and let's get this top of this style here. These are called the style. I guess you call it the leg when you get down below that. You got the, the anatomy of a chair. You basically have your legs, seat rails, the style, crests, crests. If you have a, a vertical piece here, you'd refer to that one as a splat. If you didn't know that, now you do. See, dropping knowledge bombs on you guys. That's what you guys come to my channel for, knowledge. Knowledge, I got plenty of it, I'm here to give it away. It served me well. All right, so that looks good. And let me just make sure I got a little bit here at the top. I wanna to make sure this joint is. I noticed once we cleaned the glue off, it wasn't quite as snug as it was previously. Of course, because I cleaned the old glue off, but it will be snug again once we get this on here. So we don't need a, a lot of clamp pressure on this. We could probably just put some, um, couple little, couple little clamps on there, and that will hold that in place until tomorrow, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, Uno, those. There we go, voila. Okay, cool. Oh, you know what? Let me just do this to the outside. I have the other one on the outside. Let's do it that way. I'll keep this uniform so that the pressure is even. All right, and I see, oh, let's walk in there. Let's redo that one. I see here we got, a, there's a little bit. So before I walk away from this completely, I'm gonna check it for any glue that's squeezing out of the, of the joinery. And I didn't go overboard with the glue. I kept it to just small brush glue. So you don't have a lot of squeeze out when you do that, which is good. You don't want a lot of squeeze out. So then you got the situation where you got to clean a lot of glue off like I did on the previous video. But on that video, I had to put so many clamps on that chair. There was really no way to get, see, so like right here, for instance, I can see some squeeze out that's right behind this clamp, but I can't get to it. So we're just gonna have to deal with that tomorrow. All right, so this chair is done.
right, that's it in a nutshell. These are done. There's really nothing left to do at this point. Minus remove the clamps, touch the finish. This was a challenging project. It was a lot of fun. I hadn't had to make a piece like that in quite some time, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and then hit the notifications bell. I'll see you guys on the next episode.